everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Tan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Stop and smell the wine. That's what this episode is all about. I thought it would be kind of cool to do a couple episodes about the process of drinking wine and what it's all about, decanting, and this one's going to be about smelling wine. I think that's a step that a lot of people skip. I, I'm sure that it would be safe to say what, what maybe 60, 50 to 60 percent of the people pop a wine, pour it, drink it. They're with friends, right? They're just doing their thing. They're having a great time, just drinking the wine. That's that's fine. But I do believe that just a couple of sniffs of that wine will make it that much more enjoyable for you when you're drinking that wine. And, and let's put it this way. Have you ever had a stuffy nose, kind of a cold stuffy nose, and you went to eat something and it's like, ah. You know, like one of my favorite meals when I was growing up was mac and cheese. But, man, if you had a head cold, you just, it just did not taste the same. You know, what I, you, you know what I'm talking about. If you put a clothespin on your nose and try to eat, nothing comes through. So it's the same with wine, really. If you don't take just a few seconds, it doesn't have to be a minute or two minutes, whatever. There's a few seconds to smell that wine. It is going to be that much more enjoyable to you. That's without a head cold, of course. Well, we understand that, right? So, smelling wine is just one of those fun things to do. And if you're into wine, I know a lot of you guys are. You're watching this program. You're watching my episodes. I know you're into wine. So, and, and uh, just a shout out to Chris. Chris stopped by the store and he, he kind of, you know, he gave me a really nice compliment about how I'm, my ability to smell scents and wine rather quickly. Um, I think it's because I really... I, I get it, I dig it, I love it. I love smelling wine and trying to find those characteristics in that wine that really uh, shines through in a particular varietal. A cork dork, Bianca Bosco, I think is her name. Anyway, very interesting uh, book. If you ever get a chance, if you're interested in reading it, it's very good. And they actually, she has a whole chapter devoted to the olfactory senses and these scientists that really get into it and actually help people that don't have a sense of smell to develop a sense of smell. You can actually do that. You can actually improve your sense of smell. Now, I've always felt like, well, let's, classic example. I have a hard time with blueberries. I love blueberries. I love the way they taste. I can taste blueberries. They're very subtle in their scent. So a lot of times when I'm smelling a wine, I have trouble getting blueberry out of that wine. So I kind of practice it. And the cool thing about it, if you can get a couple of people that are just a little bit, little bit interested in smelling wine, it's a good thing. I know as in, in my career in the wine world, a lot of people said, well, of course I'm smelling black raspberry because you said it. Well, that's not necessarily true. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. I like to be with people that enjoy smelling wine and getting scents out of it. Uh, particular scents. S-C-E-N-T-S. -E and you get around those people and sometimes they struggle with a particular aroma. And somebody will say, well that's tarragon or that's rosemary or that's blueberry. They nailed it and because they said it, I realized what I was missing. So it's very cool. Now, in the psalm world, which I am not in the master psalm world at all, it's a big deal. They do blind tastings and they have to understand those aromas and the aromas that are common to certain varietals. We know like, for instance, Cabernet Sauvignon has always, usually always has uh, current on the nose. Uh, oftentimes, Merlot will have plum. Those are specific aromas to a specific varietal. Now, granted, uh, types of, uh, I'm going to lose it, I'm losing it, I'm losing it. Yeast type, sorry, uh, certain kind of yeast will add certain kind of arom aromatics to the wine. That's true. If they uh, allow, a, you know, if they allow the um, indigenous yeast to, to uh, 
put out fermentation, then of course, you know, it will be more true to the varietal. But they can actually kind of, I hate to use the word manipulate, but certain kind of yeast add certain kind of characteristics to certain kind of wines. But we are going to look at two different wines here. I know this program is, a lot of times I review wines, but I like to talk about different aspects of wine tasting and that sort of thing. And I really want to do a decanting episode. One of the uh, wines that really intrigues me as far as aromatics is Carmenere. So this is the uh, 2016 uh, Karma Reserva Carmenere from Mall Valley in Chile. And this rolls in at, oh, I don't even have the price on this, I'm sorry guys. I think it's around 16 bucks. I'm not positive about that. I didn't write the pricing on this. Sorry, excuse me. But this is more about smelling than it is about the actual wine. But here you go. Carmen Carmenere. Carmenere is the sixth grape of Bordeaux. Remember, it's a Cab Merlot, Cab Franc, Malbec, Petit Verdot. Those are the five. And then Carmenere used to be in there, and that's the sixth grape of Bordeaux. Let's give it a little rinse. I'm using my bigger glasses here just because the aromatics pop a little bit better when you have a more open surface. Okay, so Carmenere, uh, oftentimes, well, so kind of common characteristics of Carmenere are chocolate, tomato leaf, uh, a eucalyptus, bell pepper. Those are um, very distinct ar aromatics of Carmenere. So let's say a master psalm, uh, a guy's going for master psalm, he's doing a blind tasting. He smells those elements. So in his mind, in his little brain, big brain, hopefully, <laughs> mine's little, his is big, uh, in his brain, it's going to say, Ch -ch 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 Carmenere, possibly, possibly, Camp Franc, you know. Camp Franc and Carmenere to me are very, very close. So, very dark in color. This is like ruby purple. Very, very dark. So definitely on this one I'm getting chocolate tones. Yeah, chocolate. There's a little bit of parazine. Now that would be the tomato leaf and the bell pepper, but this doesn't have a huge amount of that. So, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule, right? I mean, that's the way it goes. Wine's the same way. Not every varietal is going to show every characteristic that normally goes there. But Carmenere is very, very uh, well known in Chile. Yeah, this is Mall Valley, um, Chile. So, yes, Carmenere. So, this would, should show many of the characteristics of Carmenere. I'm seeing to be getting a little bit of blackberry off of this one. Some dark cherry, for sure. And, and as regard to smelling, see, no, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here because I'm so used to reviewing ones. Definitely swirl the wine in your glass and you know don't get super carried away but just swirl it like this which breaks up the wine surface which allows the aromatics to come out of the wine so that's why you do that you can do it on the surface if you want you can do it here if you want so I'm getting a little bit of parazine a little bit of bark more bark and dirt than I am tomato leaf even a little blackberry stem coming through so you see how I'm swishing it like this? Now, I do this automatically. I've been doing this so long that I'm in a crowd, I have a party at my house, and I'm swirling the wine. That's just what I do. Now, most people don't even notice, right? They just do it. So if you make it a practice, just give it a little swirl, give it a little sniff, you know, just kind of find those aromatics you're looking for. Now, I'll tell you what. If you are not familiar with a certain aroma, you are not going to nail it. That's why I like to get together with two or three people that are interested in it. Then you start getting those aromatics. Sorry about the eye. I'm going to get that looked at on in a couple weeks. My eyelid just keeps dropping. So, yeah, it, it's, it doesn't bother me except that my eyelid drops. Yeah, a little bit of licorice on this one as well. Carmenere, I love Carmenere. It's one of my favorite varietals, and they do a lot of it in Chile. So if you want to try a Carmenere, look into that area. So I swish it, I smell it, don't take too long, and just practice finding aromas that you 
can try to identify. And, you know, a lot of people think it's kind of goofy. I know that. Uh, I can understand why. But it's fun. I mean, it's really fun to try and get those aromatics out of there. And the more you do it, the more you practice it, the more you think about it, the better you'll get at it. Yeah, let's just, I like the bark and the earth underneath. Let's see what we get on the palate. This baby is tight. 2016. This baby needs some time in the bottle. I can tell that. It has uh, gritty tannins. Minerality. The uh, chocolate notes come through with the blackberry. The currants. I get a little current notes coming through as well. Dark cherry. And right at the back end, right at the back end, you get that parazine. Parazines are the herbaceousness, blackberry stem, tomato leaf. This is more leaning towards blackberry stem than tomato leaf. Uh, earth and bark, definitely. This is a solid wine. I'm sorry I don't have the price. I'll put it down below when I uh, set this up for uh, publishing. And hopefully I can find the price on this. This is... Pretty solid Carmenere, especially for a beginner. Some Carmenere can give, be very much herbaceous, can be a lot of tomato stem, can be a lot of bell pepper. This doesn't have as much of that. A little bit, a little bit, definitely. Getting a little bit of, a little bit of tomato stem in there. It's coming through at the back side. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to smell it after you taste it. Yeah, I'd, I'd go straight up B-plus on this one. It's solid Carmenere from Chile, ageable. I would go 10 years easy on this, and it will flesh out very nicely. But you see that? You know, it's kind of fun to do that. And do it at home by yourself if you want to. I just associate it with something you're familiar with. Don't be afraid. Uh, you know, if you're that... Yeah, I hope you're interested, because I really enjoy that part of wine tasting. And smelling. Now, one of my favorite varietals, Zinfandel. Zinfandel is very, um, obviously, this is a uh, uh, the sidebar, I believe this is a uh, Ramey's label. This is the uh, sidebar, Old Vines Inn, 2018. Uh, <laughs> am I going to be able to say that? Mokalumne River, Lodi County. So this is Lodi. It rolls in at... Uh, $16. There you go. So I love Zin. I love smelling Zin. Uh, one of the couple of characteristics of Zin is it can be very jammy on the nose. Uh, my I did go to the uh, entry level song class and they had three glasses on the table when we came back from lunch or a break and one of the t ones I didn't even have to taste it. I knew it was Zin. It just was Zin is, can be very obvious uh, it's very jammy on the nose. You get a lot of, I, I often get black raspberry, licorice, black pepper, boysenberry, little cranberry, blueberry, they're all there. And blueberries, are, like I said, I'll admit it, I'll admit it, blueberry's a hard one for me. This one actually has chocolate on the nose. It is jammy. Color is, it's not as dark. It's actually kind of more towards the ruby side. Want me towards the ruby side. Hedging towards Garnet. So you get a little bit of that black raspberry. A little chocolate on this one as well. I definitely get in the licorice. Ah, no blueberry on this one. Not getting any pepper hits either. And one of the things that will affect the nose is the barrel treatment. French oak versus American oak. Those are all factors in determining how a wine will smell. So there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of things. But I think just taking a few seconds to smell the wine will 
increase your enjoyment of that wine. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe a little pepper hit on that one. Keep swishing that wine. Keep doing this. Stick your nose right in there. I mean, I'm wearing glasses, right? So it's, but put it right in the bowl. Just get it right in there. Give it a big sniff. You know, give yourself a chance. Practice. It's so much fun. Really, it is a blast to stop and smell the wine. Let's see what we get on the palate. So chocolate notes, um, definitely boysenberry notes are coming through on this. Black raspberry, little dark cherry, all those are coming through. And at the very back side of this one, you get a nice little hit of black pepper. I love Zinfandel, it's just such a great wine. Um, it's so enjoyable just to sit down and drink by itself, but you can also, of course, enjoy it with food. It goes really good with beef, dishes. Um, I'd have it with ribs. Oh, it'd be fantastic with ribs. I'm just looking for the alcohol content on this. It is 14... Is it 14.9? 14.5? So Zinfandel can be a little bit higher. That's not bad for a Zinfandel. I've seen Zinfandels get up to 17, actually. Nice balance. Doesn't go super goopy jammy, but it's got a lot of fruit. And it's and it finishes nice and dry with that kind of black pepper. I'm gonna go B plus on that one as well. I like it a lot. There you go. Stop and smell the wine. Just practice it. Um, if you need if you I, I would actually reach out to some people, because I know a lot of you guys that watch these are into wine big time. And you do want to be able to um, identify certain things in a wine. So I think get a couple of you together and just practice that. Think, okay. And don't be afraid. Say whatever you want. Say it smells like pizza. Say it smells like a blue cheese hamburger. Say it smells like a perm. Oftentimes I'll smell wine that uh, reminds me of my mom getting a perm when I walked in the house. I hate that smell, by the way. But it's in a lot of wine, and I get that. So... You know, just don't be afraid to spit it out. Be around friends that aren't going to be critical of what you say. You know what I'm saying? And uh, have fun with that. So stop and smell the wine. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I appreciate your support. Thanks for the new subscribers. I had a couple of names. I didn't bring them out. I'm so sorry, guys. I'll mention you later. I might be off for about a week. Just letting you know. Um, and then I'll be right back at it. I want to do a decanning episode. I have a couple of wines I need to review. It's going to be fun. Uh, uh, I'm excited about this channel and what's going on and the support I'm getting. I really appreciate it. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.